Okay, guys, we're back. Battle Box arrived today. I love Battle Box because they always arrive a day earlier than the tracking says they're going to. So um, it's Battle Box day, and I don't know if you can tell. I should have gotten a ruler just to, to go along here because this is a really large package. Haha, <laughs> I said large package. Um, it's also pretty heavy, too. So we'll just go ahead and jump into the unboxing and see what makes this such a big, heavy box. As usual, we got our packing fluff, so that's nice. We'll just put that on top. Oh, Zelda can fly. All right, so here is mission 20, building shelter and tinder collection. And this, uh, I guess, is kind of cool because it could go with the fire starting box they had before, but... Um, so Pro Plus is what we're looking at, $319.47 value. Um, I'm pretty excited to see everything that's in here. Uh, it just, it looks pretty awesome. I'm trying to get a shot of the whole packing card so you guys can see. So to start with, and in no particular order, we'll just go with the, uh, what comes in the box. So this is the Battle Box uh, all-purpose tarp. I hope that their name on it does not start like the Alpha Outpost thing of putting their name on everything. But it's just a general tarp, desert tan kind of color, right? Um, great to have if you're if you're gonna make a shelter. It's certainly nicer to put this on the ground than sleep on wet ground. You can use this as the roof material, right? So that you're not sleeping in a rainy, soggy uh, water in your face. And it's, you know, as I expected, standard. If you're familiar with like GI ponchos uh, or anything like that, it's, it's the same kind of stuff as those issued ponchos. So that's cool. I don't have to use my poncho as a shelter half now. I can use this. I'm gonna do this next just because it's a big, big, big box. I like big boxes. So let's see what's in here. Well, I guess this is the knife of the month. Actually, this isn't even the knife of the month because if you look on the packing, the Pro Plus, which includes the knife of the month, is the Zippo 4-in-1 Woodsman tool. So this is going to be yeah. the uh, Outdoor Edge Saber Back Bowie. Um, Wow, let's... for someone that doesn't like fixed blades, I have really been liking all the fixed blades that come in Battle Box lately. Um, so, you know, I just saw a thing online actually that said 30 years ago was when Crocodile D Dundee came out and taught Americans what a knife was. And you know what? I'm not going to embarrass myself with a crappy Australian accent, but that's a knife. Yeah. Um, this is cool. So it's got kind of a rubberized handle. Um, I don't know if these screws are decorative or actually hold it together. Probably, I'm assuming this uh, slips on and they bolt it in there. But it, it's um, a little thin for my taste, but it kind of feels good. It's grippy. Um, check out that blade. That is just a wicked looking blade. There's some oil, of course. They always do that to keep it from rusting or whatever in the package. Which makes me think that this is probably carbon steel rather than stainless. Which is what I'd want a knife like this to be made out of. Um, I'm not sure how sharp it actually is. It feels pretty sharp. Um, we can do a quick edge test, you know, just paper slicing once we're done with the rest of the unboxing. But this is really, really nice. Um, I'm going to put it back in the sheath and then see if they've got some specs on it. Okay, in the package right there, there's the specs. Um, so you've got a 10 and a quarter inch blade. Uh, it is kind of a heavy knife. It doesn't feel as heavy as that says, though. It really doesn't feel um, as heavy. It's really well balanced. But carbon spring steel, like I thought, um, powder coat on it, that's cool. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to, to test this out. This is uh, really cool, actually. Next up, we've got a pocket chainsaw, the world's fastest cutting pocket saw. All right, I'm gonna need to see the documentation on that before I just buy into it. But when you open the tin, you get these nylon cords, you get these uh, little eye hooks and the blade, and it all connects to uh, attach to the handle there. So the nylon cord to the eye hooks to the blade itself. Um, there's plenty of videos online where you can see how these work. This is the more effective from what I've seen type of pocket saw. There's also the one that's basically like a little garrot wire and it's like, you know, just a little wire that you wrap around a tree and, and slide back and forth. And I guess those work, but I've seen these be much more effective um, at actually cutting stuff. So I've never actually used one of these, but um, yeah, this is, this would be pretty pretty effective on any kind of tree, I think. And maybe we'll throw it into uh, some kind of test video or something later on. But lightweight. Um, doesn't look like a piece of crap. I can't guarantee it's made in the USA. Um, for a lightweight little folding thing, it, it feels pretty solid. I like it. 
Next, we've got a set of Gorilla Clips. So these Gorilla Clips are um, for securing your tarp, uh, and it will clamp onto the, the tarp, and then you can anchor it down, and you can adjust it. So that's pretty good because a lot of these tarps don't have grommets or stuff like that. Like the US military poncho has grommets in it. You can tie it down. Um, but what if you don't have that? So this way you can anchor it down to something and uh, they do feel pretty secure, pretty tight. You just put your tarp material in there and you cinch it down and then you can anchor that to whatever you want. Okay, so next the wicked tree gear. So this looks like another saw. I'm just So the question is, if I had this on me, would I ever use the handsaw when I could use this guy? No. Oh, I got all excited. I thought this was like, like a spring-loaded saw. But anyway, uh, so safety first. There's a button to open it up with. Um, and this does look pretty wicked. Um, this is also very lightweight. So pretty. it's got an aluminum frame. I can just kind of tell by the feel and the weight on it. Uh, carbon steel blade. Um, good, and it's got some flex too, because you want that in your saw. You don't want it to uh, snap or anything like that. Decent. Um, maybe maybe a little awkward in the holding. I, I don't know. Uh, I think they could have engineered that a little bit better, but who am I to tell? I haven't even used it yet, but I like this. This is just fun. Um, and as long as I have this in a pack, I don't have to try to reassemble that, um, that handsaw. And we'll look at is the Smith's Tinder Maker. I have a bunch of sharpening products by Smith's, and they're pretty decent. Um, so this is a whole kit, I guess, to make tinder to start your fire off. And that's cool that it's all self-contained, so you can use this to shave some stuff, um, you know, so you have the little tindery pieces. If you didn't remember to pack your battle box packing material, which also makes great tinder, by the way. Um, but you can use this to make tinder out of whatever kind of wood substance you have out there, and then you've got your little flint and steel to start that fire off. Okay. This is a 300 gram weight slash throwing bag is what it says on the card. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with this. Um, I guess it has multiple uses. Uh, you can definitely use it kind of like, let's say you are using one of the saws for a big limb. You can weight down the end of that limb with this to help it like break under uh, pressure or something. Or I guess you just throw this at people you don't like or like a bear's face or something like that. I don't know, but you get that in the package. So Elk Ridge, um, so according to the packing slip, um, this is probably the Elk Ridge ER199 Axe. Wow. I like the Elk Ridge ER199 Axe. This looks kind of badass. The blade feels wickedly sharp too. So we'll test this also with the other blade uh, inside. We're done filming here. Really nice scales on that. Um, I think they're just wood grained, but they feel like wood. Like it, it, it's, it's not, I'm pretty sure it's not real wood, but nice look to it. Um, nice cutting surface. You've got a line cutter in there or a gut splitter. You know, if you need to use this for field dressing and stuff, I guess. I suppose you could use this as a skinner as well, just cause you can get really good control of that blade. But very nice weight, like it. I'll edit in some, some blade test and cutting with this thing. Saving the biggest piece of this box for last, but here is uh, the Ready Man Paracord Camp Cleats. And I dropped them. These are actually pretty cool. So definitely made of aluminum, very lightweight. Great way to secure any kind of line or whatever you're using to, to put your it's shelter together. Useful all the time whenever you're using any kind of P cord or, or rope to secure gear. And you get two of them in there. Uh, they're super, they feel like nothing. Super lightweight. And here's this. a little... These. This is the Zippo 4-in-1 Woodsman tool. This is huge, um, and it's heavy, but it looks awesome. Yeah, I said that. This thing, first of all, all right, that's annoying. I thought there was like, it was very poorly constructed right from the outset, but that's just the, the plastic sheath on there rattling, so let's get that off. Very secure screw clamp on there that keeps it from coming off accidentally. Um, the blade is not as big as I would have thought, but still, it's, it is also a very, very fine edge. And, you know, as axes go, they're usually not super sharp. They don't need to be, but this feels really sharp. It's got a really nice shape to it. Um, then you've got your 
hammer side. Sorry for hitting the camera there. You got your hammer side on the other side, so putting stakes in or just smashing the crap out of bears in the face. The handle, you've got a little compartment that opens up where you keep your saw blades. I've never seen a Zippo saw before, so that's pretty cool. Um, highlighting the difference between BattleBots and Alpha Outpost. Alpha Outpost and the Patriot included a made in China fake copy Zippo. Here we have actual Zippo name brand stuff. All right, but anyway, two saw blades that you can install into here, and I'd have to look in the instructions to do it, but it makes it a full on, I'm really bad at this tonight. Makes it a full on saw, I see, so you use the sheath, that's how it goes. So you clamp the end in and you connect it to the sheath and you've got a saw right there. Can be used to pull stakes uh, as well as just hanging the thing up. It's got a really nice weight. Um, it, all of the weight isn't up in the head part right there. It kind of, you can feel the steel, the tang of this axe goes all the way down to about yay. So it's got a really nice balance too. Um, not too heavy, but heavy enough to give you a lot of force on that swing. This is pretty good. I really like this. Uh, I'm pretty excited to try this out too. I'm trying to get the whole thing in the shot because it's so big. I'm really pretty happy. I got, let's see, one, two, three, four. And if you want to count the, uh, the handsaw, five sharp things in this. But I'm really excited to do an edge test on that Bowie uh, and the axes, just a little mini chop. We're going to do that inside though because uh, being bitten alive by mosquitoes in the the evening in Florida is not fun. Plus, pizza just got delivered. I wanna go eat it. So, all right, so I'm not sure if this is all gonna be at the end or if I'm gonna splice this in item by item as we go, but uh, I'm reconvening inside to do uh, some blade tests and edge tests on all this stuff. So I wanna start off with the, the very awesome Bowie here that I love. I gave the blade a nice wipe down to get that uh, that kind of production and, and storage oil off. I thought there was like some kind of cool printing on the blade or some pattern. No, it was all just oil. Um, but it looks even better now, nice and clean. Here's just a nice close up of this blade. It is awesome. I love it. And if we take a look there. So, and it's, it's solid too. It, I'll be honest, it has the look of Kind of a cheap knife it, it does but if you hold this thing and you just mess with it a little bit you realize it's not just some like kind of cheap walmart in my opinion anyway somebody can prove me wrong but um i really really like it so let's go ahead and take a piece of paper i've never done a paper test with something this big but but this is so sharp that is great it like takes no effort to cut through that paper at all Let's move this guy over here. Let's grab a little piece of P-cord. Slices right through very nicely. And no effort whatsoever to just chop right through that. This is fantastic, love it. Can't wait to take it out and do something with it. Uh, I may consider taking this uh, rubberized handle off and replacing it with something else, um, but if I do, you know, you guys will see it. But there's that. Love this knife. Let's take a look at the Elk Ridge next. I love that this little sheath has all these snaps to help you uh, hold it in securely, but also get it out of the sheath pretty quick as well. So close up view of this guy right here. So interesting, stainless, made in China, okay. Uh, I would expect this to be a carbon steel also, but so can't win them all, right? Um, let's take a look at how this does though. I'm not expecting great performance in like the kind of paper test, but who knows? I could be pleasantly surprised. Normally in an ax, you don't see a blade that sharp, um, but that's really nice. Let's take it to the P cord. And this has like a really nice, the way it's, it, it just sort of, I'm not, I don't want to say it bounces off, but it recovers really nicely. The weight is, is, is great. It's just, it's a really solid, nicely weighted little chopping tool. Again, same as the, as the Bowie, not thrilled with the handle scales. Um, 
I might consider changing those out for something that feels a little bit more solid, but overall, this is pretty good. Let's try that, uh, the line cutter part. Oh, that's not too good. Okay, well that's pretty dull. So, that needs to be sharpened up quite a bit. Uh, maybe if there's more tension on the line it would cut a little easier, but in terms of the actual cutting surface though, that's really good. You could slice with that real nicely. You could use it as a knife blade. You could use it uh, for chopping. Moving on to this, now that I'm inside, uh, I'll actually do a demonstration of how we put that saw blade on there. So you take that steak puller, fold it over, open up the handle again, get the saw blade out, which is stored neatly in there. Inside of the handle, when you open this compartment, this part will automatically open up for you. So we're gonna leave that kind of floating. We're gonna have to open up the little sheath head. First thing is to attach the circle there to that little bracket. We make sure we get that other hole right there on that tab. Close up the sheath, screw it shut. Now that that's secured, we can close this again and put tension on that, and there you go. Nice saw for whatever you need to do. Uh, this has rubberized areas to be used as a handle, so you could get a good grip on that. Um, hold it by the ax handle part right there. I mean, it's it's more solid than it looks. I really like it. And again, it comes with two blades and you can easily replace these blades according to the packaging, you know, if anything happens. So that's a pretty nice saw axe combination. Let's uh, take this off and then look at the blade on the axe. The axe head of the Zippo 4-in-1. I had no idea Zippo even made anything like this. Um, that's pretty cool. Here's your hammering side. Not bad. Feels a little bit easier, kind of more fluid to swing axe side down than the hammer side down. Um, there's plenty of weight in there. I feel like it's balanced all right. It's just, it just feels better doing this. Um, let me go to the paper. This is awkward to do. That's not a bad cut. I mean, I don't know if it's the axe's fault it didn't go all the way through, it might be mine. It's making smooth cuts, it's just with the way I'm holding this. Um, it's it's hard to, for me to, to get the motion down. There we go. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure that this cutting the P-cord with this leverage and this weight, pretty nice chop. I had intended this block for an actual project I was doing, so that's great, but still this video up. I want to get it uploaded as soon as possible. Um, please stand by for the rest of the Ganzo giveaway knives for the uh, part two and three of the Benchmade versus Hinderer hard use test. Um, I'm editing that and getting that all ready and I've got some other cool stuff coming up too. Not sure when Spec Ops Global is going to be delivered. Um, I haven't even seen an email from them saying that a package is on the way, but I can't wait for that to get here so we can look at that too. And then the Knife of the Month Club and the uh, Survival Box that we're looking at also. So lots of cool stuff coming up. I'm now kind of excited. Uh, this channel has now exceeded 1,000 subscribers, which is really cool that people uh, actually spend their valuable time listening to me babble about stuff. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I really do. Anyway, please keep watching. Um, send me a, a note or a comment, you know, anything that you would like to see on this channel at any point. And I will be back again real soon.